Connecting Universal Design for Learning to Students Through Survey by James Morgan. So I want to first talk to you about uh, the course that I teach, which is an introduction to digital media class. This is in the fine arts. This is a class that takes and attempts to give students an appreciation of art and art practice through the use of digital tools. So in the process of doing this, we cover quite a lot of software and it is quite intense at points as well, particularly for students who do not have a background in software or in the particular tools that we're using. We do not teach software well, and we understand this. Um, but what we try to do is get students jump started on it and get up to a level of competency. Many of the software packages that we do work with involve a great deal of expertise, and you can spend a good deal of time learning them and trying to figure out how to understand them. Um, and the program is, again, geared towards the fine arts and the new media. So there's like a little bit less of an emphasis on the technological. The UDL strategies that I employed in this class uh, involve an itinerary, which is a web page, a public web page, public text web page with links to the materials that we're going to be using in class, subtitled lectured videos, uh, group-based exercises, found tutorials and references, and the feedback mechanism that I'm going to be talking to you about in a little bit more detail. So the online class agenda is posted ahead of time and gives students the ability to uh, read the instructions as opposed to having them presented in class. Um, in the past I had done this almost exclusively in my syllabus, but I found that for one thing that it helped to be able to update it, but it also helped to be able to go over it really very specifically in class. Now, in addition to um, being online, uh, this also establishes like sort of a list of things that we've done. In terms of like if a student falls behind, it's much easier for them to catch up. The closed caption lectures uh, help my second language learners a great deal. Uh, the advantage here is that if they don't understand something, the, the text of it, the text of what I've said is also at the bottom of the screen, as well as there's the possibility for rewinding and uh, watching over again. Now I also do closed captioned uh, technical lectures, which I haven't included in this list, but I put them into the same group. Group exercises let students work in or with their peers, they get immediate feedback, and the groups are much smaller than in the class, so they are often more inclined to, to speak or to question or to try to understand the material if they don't. Found tutorials are essentially anything from out on the web that is useful. Uh, the W3 schools, for example, we use in terms of like developing HTML and uh, even on towards like the technical aspects of working with Dreamweaver. Now the questions that I bring to this is like, are these exercises that I'm using effective at reaching the students? I mean, and are there some forms of these that are more easily understood? Uh, the idea is that if I can identify that a specific type of project or type of um, presentation is working better than the others, I can concentrate on that a little bit more. Um, and are all the students able to keep up? Are people falling behind? So the method that I'm using for this is uh, Google Forms, and I'm using this through Google Docs. Uh, one of the advantages of this is that it's very quick and very easy to assemble a survey, and the results are, uh, again, very accessible in terms of like uh, presentation and downloadability. The answers to a Google form can be downloaded as a Microsoft Excel. I look at, um, I'm looking at three, four different kinds of um, questions in this uh, presentation. Uh, the first is like about a specific exercise, and my example is a speed Photoshop exercise. The second is a reflection on a tutorial or a reflection on the materials that led up to the presentation of a project. This, the third is the just like sort of um, an open-ended feedback for the instructor. 
And then the final one is much more of uh, about dealing with statistics and being able to provide immediate feedback to students on their responses. So I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is create a culture of critique um, and to encourage students to respond. Um, and this is an issue that sort of like follows throughout the entire class. Our class is very critique based. But what I want them to feel like, I want the students to feel like they can r respond and offer criticism um, of what's going on in the class. I need the additional eyes to help me, to help me to make sure that, that what I'm presenting is understood, but also to make sure that they're actually learning from it. Um, the other thing that this does is this allows me to follow the progress of a specific student particularly in the case that I'm going to show you a student who I've identified as having potential problems. So in looking at a particular exercise, uh, what I do is like, for this is the speed Photoshop exercise. This is a group exercise that involves everyone in the group of four or five students getting an opportunity to uh, get hands-on experience early in the semester with Photoshop. Uh, the students have uh, made their way through a found exercise at this point. Um, just a series of basic state or basic uh, web pages that describe uh, essentially how Photoshop works. Uh, this is an opportunity for students to watch other people, other students using it, uh, to identify the people who are in their group who do have additional expertise, and to get a chance to work with it, perhaps even for the first time themselves. Uh, looking at the feedback, um, one of the things you'll notice is that um, at least one of the students didn't respond. I don't force students to respond to all of the questions, um, but I do try to figure out if somebody is consistently not responding, uh, if there is an issue that's associated with that. And you see that it, um, the question that I've asked here is really pretty vague, um, but in the past, one of the issues that I've had with this exercise is that students did not like it because they did not understand it. So um, in this particular round of trying to understand the speed Photoshop exercise, I was also trying to make sure that I explained to them up ahead of time exactly what it was that I was looking for and what I saw that this lecture or this exercise was going to do for them and to them, and then this was also then an opportunity for me to ask and see, well, did they understand it? Did they get it? Did they appreciate and enjoy the, um, this exercise? The second one is like considering the resources for the project, and what we're looking at is part of our Photoshop clinic here, uh, which is again a subtitled video that uh, takes the student through uh, an essential skill that is needed to properly use Photoshop. Um, beyond this, I also broaden it out and look at what is going on when the project is turned in, uh, when we're essentially done with Photoshop. What was the most useful uh, piece that we did? What was the most useful exercise that we did in class? Um, and again, this is one of those things that I'm able to track uh, with particular students and uh, See, if somebody is like finding one particular type of exercise much easier, um, and then if they, then I know that certainly if they're having difficulties or if they're having issues, I can concentrate on that as a means to reach them. I also look at these sort of open-minded questions or open-ended questions, like, and this one in particular is like, how am I doing so far? And I wanted it to be very informal sort of question so that they felt like they could actually respond in an informal sense and I didn't want to guide them too much. Uh, generally speaking, I get some good feedback out of these, like maybe only one or two people that actually mentioned something that I hadn't thought of or that I hadn't noticed. And it's not always terribly critical um, and it's not always as like sort of vanilla as this, um, but it, it frequently then is able to dial me into a particular issue inside the class. The last type uh, that I'm showing here is from our midterm course assessment. And what I was able to do with this was to take and get responses to the, to the survey 
but also then to take these um, and let let Google sort of determine and create these bar graphs. And I was able to show them that you know how they how they sort of were viewing um, the overall performance and try to of both themselves and myself. Um, in addition to like what they've learned and how they've like sort of been able to focus um, and understand the materials in the class. So um, this allows me to respond to the student needs as a group and to take and to make very specific exercises or very specific uh, videos in response to student needs. Now, the videos that I'm able to make in response to student needs are not always that sophisticated. They're not always that well thought out. But in terms of being able to reach the students who need them, um, I can find out that there's a problem on in an evening and have a quick video posted uh, by, by, by nighttime and sent out, circulated amongst my students. Now the other thing that this lets me do is because I am tracking the names of students, I'm also able to follow along with students who are having problems and specifically to be able to watch them a little bit more closely, but even in addition to sort of having this conversation um, either in office hours or in the class. Um, and in this particular case, the student did not know a lot about the computer. And so she struggled with just about everything. So one of the issues that I had to respond to with respect to her was making sure that she could connect to the digital information that I had posted, the digital assets, because she was having difficulty in terms of just even using the computer. So what I, this allows to happen is uh, it creates another channel of communication in addition to, you know, uh, meeting students in office hours, meeting in class, like trying to, to gauge the level of participation and the different exercises. But it also allows me to determine like how effective something is right afterwards and to do this across all of my students.